let's talk about three Larrys in your life, okay? I think these three Larrys are very um, interesting. Uh, the first one's Larry Kurt. Right. He was very, very dear to you. Um, t t tell the he was are. Tony in West Side Story in the original. And uh, he and I were pals when we were yeah, 15, he was, 16. He was, he was a dear friend of mine. In too. L.A. Yeah. And um, I just thought he was wonderfully talented. And he knew who he was. Yeah. He was a gay man mm -hmm. who was a great horseman, mm -hmm. a tremendous gymnast, mm -hmm. uh, a wonderful singer uh, and a great pal. Mm -hmm. And he was sort of like different. Mm -hmm. So it seemed to me mm -hmm. from what people were thought of in those 50s and 60s about what, what gay men are like. And I mean, that's all over now. That's finished. But that was definitely, so he was unusual. You know, how did that? How, how did you deal with it as someone who was compartmentalized? With, I'm, you were, I'm not judging the love you had for your wife. That was true, and the great love of your life was Joe. But you were, you had compartmentalized your life as a gay man, and yet one of your best friends was this very open gay man. When no one was open, I mean, there were very few openly gay and people. He, and, and Larry and, was, and, and he was friendly with with my wife. I mean, right. we were all right. yeah. in yeah. our. Uh, yeah. Social group, mm -hmm. and you were there. He was not limited. Right, and he died of AIDS. And he died of AIDS. Yeah. He was the first person yeah. that I lost. Oh, oh, the first one. Wow. And you sang at his funeral. Mm -hmm. Danny Boy. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. He was one of the first ones I I knew who who died also. Yeah, the AIDS crisis was such a powerful change mm -hmm. for the world mm -hmm. in terms of how gay people were looked at in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And when I did that play, The Normal the Heart, normal heart yeah. most, I'd say half of the audience didn't know what they were watching because they couldn't believe that it was so. Right. Couldn't believe that people were living like that and that they, it was the first window they had on a mm -hmm. homosexual life. And men were dying, left and right and center. Mm -hmm. And the New York Times refused, as you well know, right. to report. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. And that's why so many people died unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. By the way, in this theater, mm -hmm. I think I talked to you about this earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to direct, you, you came to the production that I right. directed mm -hmm. of The Normal Heart right. in New York, right. the one night. Mm -hmm. I think as part of the reopening of this magnificent theater, mm -hmm. I'm going to restage The Normal Heart in the current. Well, that would be interesting. Is this a pitch? Or is, or, okay. well, this is a public pitch, okay? I we, think, is there a part you're interested in? Oh, yeah, I could, I, could, I could play a tiny part in it. I would love that. <laughs> if, if you'd cast me, I would, I would audition even. Uh, no, but I went to that. I mean, I saw you as, as Ned Weeks. I, I went back to see you in it, and you were amazing in it, very different than uh, Brad. Um, and then I saw that production that you directed that one night on Broadway. Uh, Tell who was in it. Huh? It was Joe Montel, Glenn Close, Victor Garber. Uh, Michael uh, Stuhlbarg. He was amazing. Uh, John, John Hickey. Was John, John Hickey? Benjamin Hickey. John Hickey was in Pat, it. Patrick uh, Wilson. Patrick Wilson. Right, he was amazing. Yeah, it was an amazing cast. Michael Cerverus. Oh, yeah. Like, who was in Fun Home. He's amazing. Uh, it was, you directed it in such a way, I'd never seen it. It was like, almost like Jonathan Tunick had orchestrated a great piece of music. I'm such a fan of it. I know, but it was like he had orchestrated. It was very quiet. It was not bombastic. It wasn't, it was the first time I realized the play wasn't just agitprop. It was... It was like part of the canon. And, and there were people. 
it, there were people, and it was uh, I. We were so the people who were there that night. I'm not going to cry here. We were very lucky to be there that night, and personally, I want to thank you publicly for it, because that was during the depths of my drug addiction, and I'd been on a binge that week. And I'd had one night's sleep, and I'd come to the play the next night, so I was still sort of feeling it. And seeing that production that night, I knew I had to be better. I had, I had to honor the people who had lived before me. I couldn't keep living the life I was living because it was dishonoring the people who had died before me. I wasn't being my best self. And seeing that production that night was the beginning of my getting sober. It really you was. see what the theater can do? It really was. It was. So thank you for that. I've always yeah. believed in the healing yeah, and the was. changing of lives uh, yeah. by going to the yeah. theater and being a part of, yeah. of that experience. But I emailed Larry Kramer today uh, to tell him that I was going to interview you, and he emailed me back. And he said, Joel changed my life as much as I changed his. <laughs> <laughs> That's Larry. Uh, <laughs> playing me in the normal heart, as he writes in his very moving book, gave him the courage to come out. But his love for my play led to his starting the chain that got the revival to Broadway. This started when he arranged a sold-out benefit reading in L.A., which was such a success that it, he directed a benefit reading in New York. It was a momentous evening. The theater was packed. You could hear a pin drop the entire performance. And when we discovered the play had legs, it hadn't aged at all. It was more timely than ever. Daryl Roth, the great producer, said that very night, she was going to take this play to Broadway, which she did, and where it won a bunch of Tonys, including for Best Revival. None of this would have happened if it hadn't been for Joel. The play is now being done more and more all over the world. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and much love. I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah, well, he loves you. So, But yet you didn't direct the Broadway. Once it moved to Broadway, you didn't direct that... I was in Anything it. Goes oh, okay. at the right. same time. Right. Uh -huh. And um, I worked with George Wolf, and we right. both were uh -huh. uh, credited, right. and we were nominated for Tonys. Right. Well, that's good. Okay. And Larry Kramer became a Broadway Tony winner. Tony winner, yeah. and finally a yeah. play of his. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've known him a very long time. A very, very long time. He's a dear. I know the dear Larry. There's, there's a dear Larry, you know, that's uh, not the irascible Larry, but, uh, but both, are, both are dear. Uh -huh. The other Larry that was, that's in your life was your neighbor in Malibu, Larry Hagman, another good, great friend of yours. Dallas. <laughs> I love, JR. I, oh, I, yeah, I love these friendships. And, and the, can and you the picture us together? Yes, I can. Yeah, yeah. We got a lot of laughs. Yeah. <laughs> when I was nominated for the Academy Award, we lived next door to each other. And uh, I, we were all, including him, we were all certain that I was not going to win. And um, I came home mm -hmm. late. And there at the front of my door was this enormous trophy that was engraved the best fucking neighbor award. <laughs> he was so concerned that I would come home empty handed. I don't you love a guy like that? He was a bit of a one off, wasn't he? He was eccentric. He's Mary Martin's son. I don't know if, if everyone knows that, but he was a bit eccentric.